So we'd like to begin singing uh, one of Bhakti Thakur's songs, Vibhavari Shesha. You can put it on the PowerPoint, on the screen. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has given us some nice songs to sing in the morning, relevant to the time of the day. So especially in the morning, we like to sing Vibhavari Shesha and the other song is Arunadaya Aruna Kirtan, which is in two parts with the Jeep Jago, the second part. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur labored so much to compose these very nice songs, many, many songs. So we're so fortunate that we can uh, absorb ourselves in chanting the holy names of Lord Krishna in these very nice poetic compositions of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Anyway, most of you can follow, even if you can't get it on the screen. Sibhavari Shesha Haloka Provesha Nidrachari Uta Jiva Vibhavari Shesha Aloka Provesha Nidrachari Uta Jiva Bolo Hari Hari Mukunda Morari Rama Krishna Hayagriva Bolo Hari Hari Mukunda Morari Rama Krishna Hayagriva Nasimhavamanda Sri Madhusudana Rajendra Nanda Nashyama Nasimhavamanda Sri Madhusudana Rajendra Nanda Nashyama Bhutana Gatana Kaita Bhashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Bhutana Gatana Kaita Bhashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Yes, 
ಆನಂದ ರಸ ಪಾರಾಯಣ ವೃಂದವಿತಿ ನಿಭಾಸಿ ರಸ ಪಾರಾಯಣ ವೃಂದವಿತಿ ಆನಂದ ಬಾಗನ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಕುಲಶರಯೋ ಜನಂದ ಬಾಗನ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಕುಲಶರಯೋ ಜನ Oh, 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 oh. 
So that is just one of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's songs. So of course there are many, many other songs. One of the compilations of songs which he's given us is a collection of songs known as Sharanagati. And in Sharan Sharanagati he has listed the six characteristics of surrender which are given to us in the purport of the Bhagavad Gita, text 1866, Sarvadharma Parigyajna, Sharanam. So within the purport, Srila Prabhupada has told about the, the six characteristics of surrender. They're also given in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Anukoyasa Sankau Anukoyasa Yasha Varjanam, like that. The six items accepting everything favorable for devotional service, then rejecting everything which is not favorable, understanding that only Krishna is our maintainer, and then knowing Lord Krishna to be also our protector the sole protector of the devotees. Then having no desire separate from the desire of Krishna and finally always being meek and humble. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote a number of songs about each of these different characteristics of surrender. And some of them are given to us in our Vaishnava song book, just like Shuddha Bhakita, Shuddha Bhakita Charanarenu Bhajana Anukula. Like that, that is in relation to what is favorable to devotional service. The dust of the feet of the devotees, the water wash the feet, and the remnants of foodstuff. And then the second verse he talks about the holy day like a codice and Janmastami how they become the mother of devotion for those devotees who take shelter of them. So in this way, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur presented the philosophy of Krishna consciousness in his writing and in a poetic style also. And not just ordinary poetry, but poems which could actually be sung. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur labored intensely doing this. Actually, he began writing books as a very young man. He was only a, like 12 years old or something when he wrote his first uh, book. He actually began writing at a very early age in his life. And he was, of course, well educated. Uh, he was educated in... English as well as all the other languages, regional languages, the Oriya and the Bengali and the Hindi. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur quickly got jobs in the government service. Actually, as a young child, his family members passed away and he was left in some difficulty. And he took up service in the government because at that time India was ruled by the British Raj. And so Bhaktivinoda Thakur managed to get some position in the government service. And at one point he became, he was sent to Puri. And he was sent to Puri and in a short time he became the deputy magistrate there. And then he was put in charge of the temple of Lord Jagannath. And that was a service which he very much enjoyed because he was able to go to see Lord Jagannath every day. And he would go every evening. He would spend a few hours seeing Lord Jagannath and watching the worship. And as the supervisor of the temple, 
he was responsible to see that everything was done in a proper manner. He would also give lectures there. He had begun lecturing and he would lecture on Srimad Bhagavatam. So it happened that one evening while he was in the Jagannath Puri temple, he was lecturing on the Srimad Bhagavatam and at that time, while he was giving in the middle of his discourse, the king of Puri came. The king of Puri came and he was creating a, no a, a lot of disturbance, he was making a lot of noise. And he disturbed Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's discourse. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur voiced his disapproval to the king. And he openly told the king, he said that you may be the king of a tiny kingdom here, but Lord Jagannath is the king of all the universes and he's residing here and you are disturbing him with all of your noise. And so the king of Puri took the remarks of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur seriously and he apologized and he bowed down. So it showed something of the authority and the respect which Bhaktivinoda Thakur or Kedarnath Dutt, as he was known, generally he was called Kedarnath Dutt. Later on he became known as Satchit Ananda Bhaktivinoda Thakur. But his name was Kedarnath Dutt and he was very much respected even by the king. And then it happened some months later in that same year that Bhaktivinoda Thakur found some discrepancy in the temple accounts and he found out that the king of Puri had misappropriated the sum of 80,000 rupees. So 80,000 rupees in those days was a very big amount. Nowadays, of course, you know, it's not very much, but in those days, if we're talking more than a hundred years ago, 1860s, 1860s and 70s, so it's 150 years ago, it's a lot of money. And so Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur told the king that you have to repay this money and you should do it by making offerings to Lord Jagannath. You should offer 52 offerings regularly for the service of Lord Jagannath. So it became a big burden on the king. The king was so angry at this that the king of Puri, that he he hired brahmanas to do a yagna and he wanted these brahmanas to do a yagna which would kill Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He actually hired some 50 brahmanas and they were doing the yagya for 30 days. Every day they were doing the yagya and the purpose of the yagya was that Bhaktivinoda Thakur should drop dead. Now, you, we know from the Srimad Bhagavatam how after Maharaj Anga, Maharaj Anga's son was Vena and Vena, King Vena was very cruel and very impious. So the Brahmanas, they cursed him just simply by their words. They cursed Vena and Vena dropped dead. The power of the Brahmanas was so great. So the same way this king of Puri, 150 years ago, he hired 50 Brahmanas to perform a yagna for 30 days. And the result he wanted was that Bhaktivinoda Thakur should die. But at, at the end of the 30 days, the son of the king of Puri died. So he got just the opposite of what he wanted. That shows something of the, the spiritual power of 
the personality of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Another example of his spiritual potency was while he was in Puri, there was one person called Vishikshina. Vishikshina was telling people that he was an incarnation of Vishnu. And this Vishikshina had mystic powers. Fire could come out from his head, from his hair, he had long hair, and from his hair fire would come out. And he was very powerful and he had the respect of the common people. Many people were following him. He had thousands of followers. And people were all saying, he is Vishnu. He is a Vishnu avatar. He has come to deliver us. So this Vishakshina was actually a rascal, debauchee, and he was doing things like calling young women, even married women. He would bring them to his ashram and he would perform rasa lila with them and then have illicit affairs with them. In this way he corrupted many young women. So the situation became very outrageous. Even people in neighboring towns near Tupuri, like as far away as Bhubaneswar and Kata, they had heard about this Vishikshina. And the people, respected people there, were worried that he may come and seduce the ladies there as well, because he's so powerful. So the British government requested Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur to take up the case and to do something about it. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, being conversant in all the scriptures, he knew that this man was an imposter and a rascal and that he was not at all an incarnation of God. But common people didn't know and this Vishak Shena was there and he had some other people, his other cronies, one would say he was Brahma and the other would say he's the incarnation of Shiva and in this way the ordinary people were worshipping him. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur came there and he came with some soldiers and he came and they arrested Bishik Shena, they took him to the court. Bishik Shena, of course, was proposing that he is innocent and that he is God and he was threatening Bhaktivinoda Thakur that you will die. I'm going to curse you. You and all your family members, you're all going to die. Don't you know I'm God? He was telling them like this, you see, and he was very powerful. And what happened was he was arrested and he was held in custody and he did not eat and he did not drink water for 28 days. Somehow this man, you know, usually if you go even four or five days you will die if you don't eat food and drink water. But somehow this, this yogi, this rascal yogi was living 28 days. And he was still physically able to walk around and curse people all the time. Anyway, he was taken and held in custody for 28 days. And he was threatening all the time, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, you and all your family, you're all going to die. And indeed, it happened that some of the family members of Bhaktivinoda Thakur got very sick and they were very ill. And he was telling Bhaktivinoda Thakur, you better let me go. If you don't let me go, your family members are going to die. It will be your fault. 
Bhaktivinoda Thakur would not listen. I, I don't care if my family member is going to die. I'm not letting you get off free. You're a rascal and a cheater. You've corrupted. You're degrading the principle of religion. You have to be punished. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur was so powerful that even though his family members were suffering, he would not compromise on the principles of religion. And he insisted this person had to be brought to court. So they brought him to court and they had to come trial. And even Bhaktivinoda Thakur was very sick. He had to be carried into court at that time. He was so sick. But Bishikshina was there and the, the judge heard the case and he found him guilty. And he sentenced him to hard labor in prison. So when he was being, when this Bhikshikshena was being taken away from the court, at that time a young British officer came forward with big scissors and he cut the long hair of Bhikshikshena. You know these tantric yogis, they have long hair, they get their power from long hair. Devotees of Krishna they get their power by cutting their hair, by shaving their heads, not by having long hair. It's better to cut the hair for the devotees. But these tantric yogis, because they have evil, evil desires and they want to do bad things, so they have the long hair. So this man, young British man, came forward with big shears and he cut the hair of the yogi. And when he cut his hair, the yogi fell on the ground and he became helpless. And when the common people saw that because he'd hair, his hair had been cut, he had no power anymore, then they understood, oh, he is not a real incarnation of God. And many people, they give up following him. Anyway, he was put to prison. While he was in prison, he committed suicide, drinking some poison. And in a short time, he died, left the world. So, this, this was one of the uh, dealings of Bhaktivinoda Thakur in fighting against irreligion and establishing what are the real principles of religion? So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur resided there in Jagannath Puri, overseeing the affairs of the temple. And while he was residing there in Puri, it happened that his wife gave birth to a son. And that son was known as Bhimal Prasad. At that time, their home was on the path where the Jagannath chariot goes. At the time of Rati Antra, they will pull the chariot from the main temple at Puri, which is Nilachal. They will pull it to the Sundarachal temple, which is Gundicha. So on the main, that main road, there's a big wide road there big wide road because the chariots come down that road and the chariots don't have any brakes and they don't have any steering either. <laughs> so you need a wide road to push the chariot. So one day it happened that the chariot stopped outside the home of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And while the chariots were there, at that time, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's wife took the opportunity to bring one of her new, newly born son out and place him near to Lord Jagannath. And it was at that time the garland fell from the deity of Jagannath as a, almost like an offering to the child. And this child, of course, it grew up to be Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati and he became the spiritual master of our own founder Acharya. So that was one pastime which took place there in Puri. 
However, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he desired to go back to Mayapur, back to Bengal. Bhaktivinoda Thakur's ancestral home was in a place called Birnagar, which is on the road when you come from Calcutta, going out to Mayapur, you can pass the place Birnagar. So they, their home is, their ancestral home is there. One of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's sons was living there. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, of course, had a large family. I think it was twelve children. The youngest was someone called Lalit Prasad. And Lalit Prasad was living there at Virnaga in the, in the ancestral home. And uh, the devotees met him. The devotees, they liked to go and meet these kind of people. So Lalit Prasad was there and they went to meet Lalit Prasad. And uh, he was very happy to meet the devotees. And later on, Srila Prabhupada also came there because Lalit Prasad had some of the writings of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He had kept some of the original writings of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So Srila Prabhupada thought it would be very nice, he can give them to us, you know, we may like to publish these things. I think today some of them are preserved in our Bhaktivedanta Research Institute in Calcutta. There is a research library there in Calcutta and uh, they do have a, a, many writings of previous acharyas, different manuscripts and documents have been donated to the library there. And so I think some of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's writings are there. So Lalit Prasad anyway, he met with Srila Prabhupada and Srila Prabhupada talked with him. One thing they talked about was working together. Srila Prabhupada invited him, he said, you can, you can come and work, come and join our movement, let's preach. Lalit Prasad said, yes, but everybody who joins have to be my follower. <laughs> So Srila Prabhupada thought, not very practical. <laughs> he is actually, Lalit Prasad, he was uh, Raganuga Bhakti, teaching Raganuga Bhakti, from doing that. And he did initiate some Westerners also, and they took Raganuga initiation from Anyway, that's Birnaga, and uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur came back, he wanted to research the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One of the very important missions of Bhaktivinoda Thakur was to establish the actual birth site of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There were many things Bhaktivinoda Thakur did. In his time, he could not even get a copy of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. It was only with great difficulty he managed to find out a copy of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Another book which he found was the Upadesh Amrita, which we call the Nectar of Instruction. This book practically had been lost in the course of time. Rupa Goswami's writing, nobody had heard of the Upadesh Amrita. Bhaktivinoda Thakur was in Vrindavan and he heard about how there was one learned pandit there who had a very nice library. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur managed to meet the pandit and the pandit invited Bhaktivinoda Thakur to come and have a look at his library. And when he was looking through the library of that pandit, he came across this book in a manuscript form, the Upadesh Amrita. And when Bhaktivinoda Thakur found it, he expressed his great joy. He said, oh, this will bring so much pleasure to all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur had copies made. And then later on, he wrote a commentary. And then Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati also wrote a commentary. And later on, our own Srila Prabhupada wrote also his commentary. 
on this very important book of Rupa Goswami. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur did so much work. He labored constantly to help us to establish what we call today the Krishna Consciousness Movement. As I said, the birthplace was very important to Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So he had been reading many different books and he could understand that the actual birth site of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could not be in Navadweep, that it had to be on the other side of the Ganga. But all the people were saying, no, no, Janmastan, Mahaprabhu's Janmastan is there in Navadweep. Even today there are some people who will argue that the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in Navadweep. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur took the help of maps and so many things. He had his own house at Swarup Ganj. So Swarup Ganj overlooks the Jalangi and from across the Jalangi you come to Mayapur and you can see what is now today. We have our Iskon temple, the Yoga Peet. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was living at Swarup Ganj and he would chant on the roof of his house and he could see some effulgence over there in Mayapur. So he was puzzled, he was attracted to go and see. And he went there and he saw when he went there, he saw not only was this effulgence coming from there, but there were many Tausis growing there. Many, many Tausi trees were growing there. And then when they did some excavation, then he found also some deity was there. The deity of, which had been worshipped by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's own parents, Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Mata. There was a Vishnu deity there. So that deity was found. So, along with scriptural evidence, Bhaktivinoda Thakur could understand that this must actually be the birth site of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One of the reasons was the samadhi of the Chankazi. The samadhi of the Chankazi is well known. The Mohammedan people, they had the samadhi for the Chankazi and that samadhi had been there since the passing away of the Chankazi and that samadhi was beside the home of the Chankazi. Now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had led the civil disobedience procession to the home of the Chankazi and there's no mention of them crossing the Ganga to go to the home of the Chankazi. So it's very clear that the home of the Chankazi was not far away, it was walking distance from the home of people like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gadarha, Advaita Acharya, Srivas, they all had their homes there in that one area. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur established then the Yoga Peak, the temple for the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, he did not have any money to build the temple, but he announced that he was ready to go begging and ask one rupee from every gentleman in Calcutta. So he was such a respected person because he was, he was respected by all kinds of people. Just like we say about the Goswamis, the Goswamis of Vrindavan, they're described in the Goswami Astikam, Dira Dira Jana Priyo Priyakaro, that they loved both by the gentle and the ruffians. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was respected by all kinds of people. He could, he was all, he was very much liked by all the local people and the, the, uh, 
foreign people there also had great regard for him because of all of his work and his culture and education. He could speak to everyone and relate to everyone. He was writing also profusely throughout his life. The Sri Krishna Samhita was one of his books. When that was published, it gained a lot of acclaim from all the learned people. Later on, he also wrote Jaiva Dharma, which is a very important book, which is translated and studied a lot by devotees today, as well as all of the other songs which he gave us, and then his commentaries also on different scriptures like Chaitanya Charitamrita and Upadeshamrita. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in order to confirm the yoga peak, he brought Jagannath Das Babaji there. Jagannath Das Babaji, he was the, the, uh, the leader of all the pundits, all, all the Babaji's, all the sadhus there in Navadvi, he was the, the head of them all and the most senior, the most respected, the most knowledgeable. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur arranged to bring Jagannath Babaji there. He was nearly 130 years old at the time and he was carried there by his servant. So it is described that when he came there on the back of his servant that he got up and jumped and danced and said, yes, this is the place. This must be the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So with the confirmation of Jagannath Das Babaji and with scriptural evidence as well as evidence from different maps, Bhaktivinoda Thakur established what is actually the birth site of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it was then he, he arranged for his own son to come there and stay there in Mayapur. Mayapur at that time was very remote, more like jungle, there was not much there. But he wanted to build the temple. And it was Bhaktivinoda Thakur's desire also that we would develop the parikrama of all the places of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. And to facilitate the parikrama, Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote this book, Navadvita Parikrama, Navadvita Mahatmya, describing all the different places of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's and later on, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati took up the Parikrama there in Navadvip and with thousands of devotees and with the elephant and many other horses and so on, they went on the Parikrama around the holy places of Navadvip, fulfilling the desire of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not advent himself in this world just simply to deliver a few Indian people. He advented in this world to deliver the whole universe, people all over the universe. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur had this vision that the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are meant for the world. And for that purpose, he wrote in the English language and he, after writing and publishing, he would send copies to the West. And indeed, in the year 1896, he had sent copies of a, a booklet which he had written about the life and teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So for 1896 was the same year in which our founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada advented in this world. So that was also significant. And later on, 
Prabhupada, uh, Bhakti, our own Prabhupada told devotees about how Bhakti Vinod Thakur had sent books to the West. So the devotees, they thought, we have to check this out. And they went to the universities, they went to places like McGill University in Toronto, and they found the books. They actually found copies of the books which Bhakti Vinod Thakur had sent there more than a hundred years ago. So they were very pleased, encouraged, with appreciating the efforts, the desire of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur to distribute Krishna consciousness to everyone. And it was Bhaktivinoda Thakur's prediction that in the future there would be Chinese and American and Russian and Africans and they would all come together with the Bengalis and they would all chant the holy name of Lord Goranga. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's prediction was fulfilled in the years to come. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur wanted so much to see Krishna consciousness established everywhere. He himself would go village to village and it was his program to have Bhakti Briksha and Nam Hatha. These all came, these were all the concepts of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He would go village to village and his program was just like our program. He would do kirtan, he would speak some philosophy and then he would all take prasadam together. In this way, Bhakti Vinod Thakur had his Nam Hatha program going everywhere. Many, many people, many people became his followers. But he wanted to spread Krishna consciousness everywhere, not just only in Bengal, not just only in India, but throughout the whole world. That was his vision because he knew, of course, Mahaprabhu had also predicted that the holy name would be spread to every town and village. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he played a very, very vital part in establishing this Krishna consciousness movement. You can see in one of our books, Srila Prabhupada has put at the bottom of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, that it's, he describes Bhakti Vinod Thakur, the pioneer of spreading Krishna consciousness in the Western world. So the fact that I'm here today is only by the mercy of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur and his desire that he could see Krishna consciousness spread to Western countries all over the planet, everywhere people should get the opportunity to hear the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Bhakti Vinod Thakur, what, he studied all the different religious philosophies. As a young man, he read about Christianity because at that time the British were ruling India. So many young people, they thought, oh, I should become a Christian because all the British are here and they're Christian, so if I'm a Christian then they will accept me, I will be able to get a good position with them. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur read the books, he read all of the Bible, he read the Quran, he read all these different philosophical teachings. He was not convinced until he came across the Srimad Bhagavatam. It was by hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam that he understood that here is the great treasure. Here is all of the philosophical knowledge anyone could desire. Read Srimad Bhagavatam, Nigama Kalpa Taror Dalitam Palam, Shukamukat Amrita Dravatam Pivata Bhagavatam Rasamalayam Mahuraho Rasika Bhuvi Bhavuka. 
that this Srimad Bhagavatam is the ripened fruit of the Vedas. And it's all the more sweeter because it has come from the mouth of Sukadeva Goswami. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur was so appreciative of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And he read it again and again and he wrote also his notes and compiled Sri Krishna Samhita based on what he had understood from Srimad Bhagavatam. He wanted so much that these books would be published and made available for people everywhere. So the Krishna Consciousness Movement is trying to fulfill the desire of Bhaktivinoda Thakur by publishing the books in different languages and distributing them all over the world. And you can see now sets of Srimad Bhagavatam are available in Russian and in Chinese and in Spanish and in Italian, in French, all the different languages. German, of course. So, very important work. And this was the desire of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, as I said, he, he had a, a, a large family. He trained all of his children to be devotees. He wanted them all to help him to spread the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requires pure-hearted pure souls to take up the work of Krishna Consciousness. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur had this large family for the purpose of having devotees to help him spread Krishna Consciousness. And he taught them everything. He had them taught the languages, like Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he was only six years old, he could already quote the whole Bhagavad Gita. And he could preach it also. So this is something Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he, he, I think he departed in Jagannath Puri, at the end of his life, he took Babaji and he just simply chanted the holy name and he said, but he would say if you bring a horse you can put me on the horse and take me for preaching he wanted so much to go out and preach the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu there were no cars in those days so he said if you can bring a horse or something put me on and I will go, go out for so this was his book. He wrote many poems. One of the poems is very famous. I think you all must know it. Um, he reasons ill who tells that dies to the mouth, while thou art living still in sound. A Vaishnava dies to live, and in living tries to spread the holy name around. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote this verse, it's from a series of poems which were written in glorification of Haridas Thakur. And later on it became the epithet on Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's memorial. So we can sing some more songs about Bhaktivinoda, by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. One of the most famous of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's song, of course, is Yashomati Nandana. Did you sing that yet? Yashomati Nandana Prajabhara Nagara Gokula Ranjana Khana Thank <laughs> you. 
Jasa mati nanggan nabraja badana kada Kukula dan jana pana Kopi harana jana maha jana mano hara Kopi harana jana maha jana mano hara Kalaya jama nabi jaha
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So you know, you know why I'm saying this? Bhajan, Sarvasvatovan, Charani. This is also from the uh, Sarvamadhyaki collection of poems from Sri Ramakrishna. It's still projected on the screen. Hare oh, Krishna came out. Uh, in August, you can come forward, silently. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna Maharaj Hare Krishna 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 Hare Thank you, Mother Very Hare Krishna. Thank you. 
Hare Krishna. Let me just shut up. Now that I have surrendered all I possess, I fall prostrate before your house. You are the Supreme Lord. Kindly consider me your household dog. Stay me oh. and maintain me as you will. I shall remain at the doorstep and allow no enemies to enter your house. I will keep them at the bounds of the boat surrounding your home. Whatever remnants your devotees need Hare Krishna. After all so nice to Krishna, see you. How are you? Will be my daily nice to see you. I will feast on those remnants with great ecstasy. While sitting up, while lying down, I will constantly meditate on your lotus feet. Whenever you call, I will immediately run to you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Want some mango? Who said? Hare Krishna. Thank you. 